All right, man, the series is over, Neil, for now, 100 meetings. I cannot, for the life of me, understand what in the world was going on in Pat Narduzzi's mind to try to kick a field goal on fourth and Well, there are a lot of things we can talk about this game. I, I'm, I'm for, that's one of the worst decisions I've ever seen a, co a football coach make. I, what do you make of him kicking a field goal there? Yeah, I mean, we actually talked in the press box. It wouldn't have shocked me. It's a non-conference game. He wants to win it so bad. I thought conceivably with with uh, five minutes to go, if he scored, do you go for two there? Yeah. Neil had just asked that about 30 seconds earlier. I said, oh, come on, he won't, you give your kids a chance to win the game. Right. And he didn't. He didn't give his kids right. a chance uh, to win. Uh, you know, he uh, he's kind of quirky. Clearly their, their team played pretty well uh, most of the game. I mean, played well defensively, made a bunch of plays on offense. I thought this was a really well uh, well competed really a tough game a, a great way in a lot of for this series to end I think it, it really represented what the series was all about uh, low scoring tough uh, one touchdown type game uh, yeah I don't know why suddenly he didn't play to win because even on first down he tried to throw there and you know, I know Pitt wasn't having a lot of success running the ball, but it was one yard, and you had a, a pretty savvy quarterback. I thought they might have been able to make a quarterback sneak on first down, then he got dumped on second down, and then he was had a guy open on third down, and Cam Brown made a play. So it was surprising. Uh, surprising. I, I just I just don't get it, Pat Nord. He, he, he likes to talk over there from the western part of the state. He talks all the time. The, the whole signal thing that he wanted to bring up on Thursday, which was a, a moot point, really. And he wanted to get that off of his chest, he said. I mean, I, I don't know. There's just something about Pat Narduzzi that I look at and think, you're going to do all this talking year after year, and you're basically going to kind of beg Penn State to play you because you want it, you want so badly for the series to continue. Then you're going to come in on fourth and one, and you're going to kick a field goal. Yeah. I just thought it was atrocious. I don't know how he looks his kids in the eyes, Neil, yeah. because he took those kids' opportunity away. And I know some pit players, uh, you know, didn't like it as far as, uh, you know, you're here to win. Yeah. I mean, you know, play to win. When you, you hold them. Penn State when, did the one with four minutes to go. You like, still have a shot. Yeah, you're, you're pinned in down there. Now, somebody asked me, well, you know, it was a little bit similar, not exactly in the Citrus Bowl. Penn State kicked a field goal, but that was a little different. They weren't at the one. And that brought them within three. Pitt had one timeout left yeah. too because they had burned a couple. So well, they burned the one, yeah, yeah. which uh, early a defensive timeout, which I think was a bad call because you can see their players were frustrated that they even did it because it was like on first down. Then they burned one going forward on fourth down and right, had but, a gorgeous play call. Right, that was that a good timeout. Down. Absolutely, that turned out because yes, no they were going to punt. Yep. Then they decided to go for it. They they went for it at midfield on fourth down, and then they don't do that. Yeah. So very much a. Uh, a conflict. I just think that's for if, if we don't see these teams play for 10, 20, 30 years, that play yeah. is going to haunt Pat Narduzzi for a long, 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 no matter what he does yeah. at Pitt, no matter how many coastal uh, championships he, he wins. But hey, look, uh, uh, KJ Hamler, Penn State's receiver, said all hail to Pitt. Great respect for those guys. Much love to them. This was a good football game. Oh, yeah. Pitt, Pitt didn't run the ball at all. They had 250 yards on the ground last year. 24 or so today, right. but Kenny Pickett came out and threw the ball well. Yeah. I, I hey, this this was a good football game that came down to basically a 35 yard hail mary. At the yeah, end. I don't know how good really either team is, but they both laid it all out there today, um, and that was kind of an unfortunate because you, you you wonder what would have happened had they been able to tie the game at 17 up with three to four minutes. Would Penn State have been able to make a drive in that situation? Um, you know, a lot of really good tackling, I thought, on both sides. Mm -hmm, I, yeah. I thought you did not see a lot of missed tackles. You could feel the intensity. You could feel the rivalry. I've obviously loved this game for a long time. You know, a couple of us got in the elevator, and some people were tired of it. They're tired of uh, uh, the topic. One guy said, I, uh, good, I hope they never play again. I said, let me, I'd like to see a hundred more. Maybe not me, but I, I just think it's been really cool. And when you get an in-state robbery, I think that it just means more. And you can tell whether they'll admit it or not. Uh, one of the big topics of conversation, Sean Clifford talked about missing some of the shots downfield. I love, absolutely love the fact that Penn State took a bunch of shots 
down the field. That's what this Penn State offense has been for a few years. I don't think it's a very consistent offense. It's really the analogy I used was it's like an American League team. If they hit three three-run homers but strike out 18 times, they're probably going to win the game. Penn State wants to take a bunch of those shots. Now, today they missed most of them. Sean Clifford was just a little off, yeah. overthrowing guys by a couple yards. But, but look, I love that mentality. You don't have to have a great offense if you have a great explosive offense. Hey, he took some shots. Pitt really came after mm -hmm. him, especially early, and it took a while to, to get him – uh, you know, he, he, uh, he, I thought, took more of a beating in this game than he has taken so far. They have an off week. Uh, but I agree, and I think that, you know, he shows me something. He's a pretty tough kid. He's, he's made some good run-pass options. Um, you know, he didn't play great, and I think Pickett probably outplayed him today. But I think Clifford is, um, after three games, I think you have to be generally impressed. All right, so it may be a while. Uh, before we see this series again. I want to get in one, one more. Well, thing. I know what you want to oh. get. It has to be about the parking, right? No. Oh, well, no? Okay. Well, I, I'll do the parking in a that second. That could be separate. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Penn State's trying to play, trying to play four tailbacks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they got good contributions out of each one. But I don't know that anyone has really been able to settle in uh, we'll see how this continues. I think Journey Brown's a starter. Journey, he, he's earned it. But you see Noah Kane lead him right down yeah. the field with a great drive, catching a ball and then scoring later on. Then you don't see him again. Right. I mean, that, does, that doesn't make It's like these coaches have a predetermined rotation that they want to use. Well, some of this is a, probably a bit another story or a bigger picture yeah. on what they're telling kids in recruiting. Yep. Because they're trying to play all these kids. They're playing a lot of true freshmen. Um, but I, I don't know what that effect is having on their running game. Alright, last thing about the parking. Yeah. It was a disaster today. The, the, the parking at Beaver Stadium was a disaster today. Yeah. I had many people reach out to me and say, why did they try to fix a problem that wasn't broken? Right. I mean, it took me three hours to get here. It usually takes 50 minutes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just complaining about me. I know a lot of you feel the same way. What what went into the thinking? What, why why go through all of this? What Was it really that bad? I don't think. I thought Penn State did the best job. We've been on the road at all the places in the Big Ten. I thought Penn State did the best job of traffic control of anybody. Uh, you had people on Atherton Street. That is clearly the route that has to be addressed. I mean, you have thousands of people from the Sheets and the Autos area crawling up Atherton Street. It literally took an hour and, uh, and 45 minutes, and it said it was supposed to take 15. Uh, you've taken us off a bypass situation, but I understand, you know, by, out on 322, uh, and of course this is a noon start against a bigger name opponent, a rivalry game, but um, it really, really has to be addressed. This is some crisis management that needs to yeah. take place. You have Purdue at noon. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Michigan could be at noon. It wasn't so much a problem with the later kickoffs, but boy, it was today. Yeah, it was, it was bad. They've got to get this fixed. All right, uh, for Neil, I'm Corey. Bye week coming up. Uh, the series is over. I know you're sad. Yeah, I am sad. Yeah, yeah right. but I enjoyed it, and today was a, a good day. All right, thanks for tuning in.